Hi everybody and welcome to my Pi Day special video. Uh, today is 14th of March 2020 and it's celebrating Pi Day. So why 14th of March? Well because Pi of course is 3.1415926. Uh, it's an irrational number and 3.14 of course is the, represents the date 14th of March. Now because Pi is an irrational number you can't express it as a fraction but you can express it as an approximation with fractions. So for example here I've got some well-known fractions that do approximate pi. Uh, it's a technique called continued fractions and allows you to create fractions that approximate any decimal number that you might want. Uh, so for example here we've got 7 over 22 that gives us uh, pi to two decimal places, 3.14. If we go to a larger fraction, 333 over 106, we get 3.1415, which is accurate to four decimal places. Uh, similarly, if we go to a larger fraction, 355 over 113 gives us six decimal places. And you can carry on this technique and find other fractions that give us uh, more and more accuracy in terms of decimal places. So this one here is nine and that one's 10. So I thought it'd be fun today to try and create a gearing ratio that approximates pi. Uh, so the way I've done that is to choose one of these fractions to try to build a gearing mechanism around that and the one I ended up choosing was the middle one 355 over 113 which gives us an accuracy of uh, six uh, decimal places and so the way I've done that is by using two differentials and in one of my past videos I presented uh, a mechanism for creating an n to p gearing ratio using differentials and I presented this particular topology here that I'm going to be using today uh, probably the best thing to do would be to watch my differentials part 3 to read um, to see all the details on how, uh, how that works in terms of math. Uh, but what it comes down to is solving this equation at the bottom here. Trying to figure out different values for the um, values for A1 to C1 uh, where A1 to C1 are of course Lego Prime so that's using the gear ratios 2, 3, 5 or 7. Okay, so what we need to do to solve this equation here, and the numerator and the denominator that gives the values of 355 and 113. Uh, so when we look at this part, it turns out in the mass that B1, B3, A1, A3 always cancel, they're equal to 1, uh, which means that what we need is a value of 2 times something plus something else equals 355. And the same for the denominator, we need 2 times something plus something else equals 113. Uh, there are many solutions to uh, these equations and what I've done, I've chosen for this one here, I've chosen 2 times uh, 175 plus uh, 5 over here. So 175, so that's 2 times 175 plus 5 uh, is equal to 355. And for the bottom equation, I've chosen minus 6 here, so it's 2 times minus 6 plus 125. So we've got... 2 times minus 6 is minus 12, plus 125 gives us 113. Now, of course, these numbers that we're choosing do have to be products of the Lego primes. So that's 2, 3, 5, and 7. So, for example, 175 is equal to um, 7 times 5 times 5. 5 is equal to 5. Minus 6 is minus 2 times 3, where the minus is a reversal of direction. And 125 can be written as 5 times 5 times 5. So now that we've picked the values uh, up here, we just need to convert those into A1, A2, B1, B2, etc. all the way to C1. And I've got a worksheet here, and the solutions I've picked uh, are that A1 is equal to 1, sorry, A0 is equal to 1, A1 is equal to 1, A2 is equal to 7, A3, uh, you can use 5, B0 can be 1, B11, B2 minus 6, B3 5, C0 1, and C1 5 times 5. 
Uh, so if we put these numbers back in here, you'll find that, for example, 175, which is A1 times A2 times C1, just checking that, so we've got 1 times 7 times 5 times 5, which is equal to 175. We've got A0, A3, C0 having to be equal to 5, so we've got 1 times 5 times 1, so that's 5, that checks out. B1, B2, C0 have to be minus 6. So we've got B1 is 1, B2 is already minus 6, and then C0 is 1, so that is correct as well, it's minus 6. And this one here, B0, B3, C1, has to be 125, so that is 1 times 5 times 5 times 5, which equals 125. And of course B1, B3, A1, A3 all cancel out, um, as you can see, because B1 is 1. B3 is 5, so we've got 5 at the top, and then A1, A3 is 5 as well, and that just equal to 1. Uh, so that gives us the numbers that we need to be able to build our gearing ratio according to the diagram I showed before. So putting those numbers back onto the diagram here, so over we have our differential 1, differential 2, we've got our input and output axles, and we simply connect input into the input of D1 via the gearing ratio 1. Over here we need 7 fifth onto the centre of D2. We need 1 25th coming across from D1 to D2 there. Uh, just 1 back to the output and then from the output uh, we need minus 6 over 5. Uh, and that gives us quite an elegant solution and that gearing differential uh, ratio should be between the output and input. Should give us 355 over 113. Which equal to pi to uh, 6 decimal places. Okay, so here's the excellent implementation of that gearing mechanism. Uh, over here we've got our input handle. This goes through uh, our gearing ratio of 1 straight to this differential. This is our 7 to 5 coming back around here. Got our 125 to 1 between the differentials there. And we've got that minus 6 coming back around to the input uh, differential uh, according along here. Okay, so let's try it out. So every time I turn this handle around once, the output over here should go around 3.14 one five nine two times okay so let's watch it we'll go around once and the output is going around one two three and a little bit of time so i don't know if you can see that but that should be a point one four one five of course there is some uh, you know movement within the gears and stuff like that which makes this less accurate but long term if you turn that enough times it should be accurate uh, up to five six decimal places. It's always fun to watch a motorized version so I've added uh, just a simple um, medium sized motor to the gearing mechanism and just watch that go around so as you can see the output's going around and the gearing is working as expected. Okay, thanks everybody, hope you enjoyed this video, happy Pi Day, and we'll see you next time.